The deployment of more cloud-oriented communications networks is attracting new names into the telecom sector. So I'm talking today with Partha Sitala. He's the CEO at Robin. So Partha, Robin is a fairly new entrant to the telecom space, having initially made its name in the enterprise sector. How did Robin find its way into some of the telecom industry's most cutting edge networks? First of all, thanks, Ray, for having me on your show. Uh, you're right. Uh, we have uh, been a pioneer in the cloud native space on the enterprise side. That's where we started. Uh, and uh, we have several large financial institutes that have been using Robin to accelerate their cloud native journey for several of their complicated uh, network storage intensive applications. Um, so the interesting thing is my telecoms, for the most part, have been uh, using you know, legacy type of infrastructures for a very long time. Uh, the first wave of virtualization also was done on things like OpenStack, complicated, very long projects, and so on. Now, with our background in uh, you know, the enterprise space, bringing these complex workloads to uh, cloud native, uh, What's happened is that, I mean, we, we found uh, an interest from some of the pioneers in, in the telecom sector who have been looking at transforming how they would be doing or uh, rolling out 5G as well as edge applications using cloud native technologies. And the work that we have done in the enterprise, when they looked at that, looked at that they basically said that, okay, this is a, the platform that Robin has built is, is very powerful. And that is something that could be used to actually accelerate the rollout of 5G services as well as edge services in a more using a more modern technology like Kubernetes and you know automation and things like that. Uh, so it started off with uh, uh, the pioneer in the space, Rakuten Mobile. Um, when they were uh, looking at launching their 5G services, they did a bake off. They looked at different solutions, and that's how they picked us. Um, and that's how we essentially entered the 5G space uh, or the you know the cloud native for telecom space. So that deployment at uh, Rakuten Mobile in Japan has certainly helped to put Robin on the map. Um, how important has that been uh, in terms of gaining credibility with other telecom operators? So the deployment at Rakuten has been very, very important for us. Uh, clearly, Rakuten is a pioneer in the space. They are the first uh, to envision a 100% cloud native uh, architecture for deploying their 5G and edge services. Uh, and of course, Rakuten has brought a lot of uh, ecosystem partners uh, to get this services rolled out. Um, and uh, as part of you know being part of the Rakuten uh, ecosystem set of partners, right, we were able to go and work with several of the leading vendors in the space. Uh, and again, given that Rakuten has been uh, very religious about sticking to the principles of cloud native and instead of you know mixing cloud native with legacy architectures uh, because of their their you know, requirement that we stick to 100 percent cloud native architectures we have been able to harden the platform uh, a lot uh, and we have now that of course it's been running in production uh, in their network it has definitely helped build the credibility of robin significantly not among the, not not just among the other operators, but also among the ecosystem, uh, because they can actually see that the Robin Cloud Native platform uh, is able to scale, is able to be resilient, um, and it meets the SLAs that are that are required uh, in a large scale network uh, such as Rakuten's. Okay, uh, key to such platforms are automation and orchestration, uh, and these have been hot terms, buzzwords in the industry. Uh, for a while now, but why are automation and orchestration so important for the success of 5G? So again, uh, 5G, again, it's not an incremental you know, improvement over 4G. We're talking about a lot more endpoints or UEs, uh, or in fact, even uh, sensor type of devices connecting uh, over the network. So of course, you need to have a lot more bandwidth, and that bandwidth also has to be delivered at lower latency and so on, which means that there's going to be a huge proliferation of uh, cell sites, edge locations, and so on. Right? So it's going to be an order of magnitude higher than what we have seen so far in the 4G space. Now, when you have such a huge volume, automation becomes key. Right? One of the obvious reasons for automation is 
how quickly can you go and roll out a new cell site? How quickly can you go and deploy a new edge service uh, closer to the endpoint? Now, doing this manually is going to be very difficult, especially when it comes to that scale. Uh, so that's definitely requires a, a level of automation that the telecom industry has not really seen uh, until recently. Uh, and of course, without doing that, you're essentially increasing your operational expenses sig significantly. But there are also other aspects of uh, automation that become important, which is around, okay, you have your services up and running and you know, you're running low on, let's say, capacity or bandwidth, and you would like to automatically go and scale. And what you really want to do there is you want to set up policies that are managing or that are essentially monitoring the usage. And based on the usage, you have to trigger certain actions, which could be things like hey, increase the compute capacity or inc increase the network capacity at a particular location, right? Now, ideally, you want to just set it as a policy and forget about it so that, you know, even in the middle of the night, there's a spike or there is something that requires the additional capacity, it's automatically taken care of. And of course, when the load goes down, you want to take it away. And that's true cloud native, by the way, right? Now, without automation, how do you even go about doing something like this? You would essentially have to have humans that are constantly monitoring your network and constantly adjusting it. Right? So that's the other aspect of uh, automation. And I would say the third aspect of automation is around, um, uh, you know, doing things like first the service rollout, which I already explained, but also things like how do you go and do upgrades uh, of these applications uh, as and when, you know, your network service function vendor is giving you newer bits because you want to be at the cutting edge of all these applications. Now, when you're talking about hundreds and thousands of servers, tens and thousands of cell sites, I mean, there is no way that somebody could manage this without a full-blown automation, where you just basically, again, define certain policies and have this automation framework go roll out all these services, upgrade all these services, and so on. So automation is critical. Without automation, it's going to be A, expensive, and B, also it's it's impossible to ensure correctness when you're doing these rollouts. So, Partha, in a short amount of time, Robin has built up a long list of partners. Uh, can you explain the importance of having a robust ecosystem of technology partners? So we have been doing cloud native for several years now. And right from the get-go, our focus was to ensure that we can run these complex uh, data or storage-centric workloads and network-centric workloads in a cloud native manner. Um, I mean, unlike uh, some of uh, our competitors who are focused on just uh, hardening Kubernetes and offering it as a solution to the enterprises. We actually took a very different approach that uh, to actually succeed at cloud native, you need to have the ability in the platform to go and run these complex workloads that are coming in from the application vendors across a various spectrum of uh, use cases, right? Now, uh, as part of this, I mean, we have been building this platform. We have built a lot of technology, a lot of IP. Uh, we have about 65 plus uh, patents in this area of storage, automation, network management, and so on, uh, scheduling, and so on. Now, uh, that gave us a lot of advantage because, um, because of the, the technology under underpinnings in, in our architecture, we were able to go and onboard a lot of, uh, a lot of partners, uh, as I said, across the various spectrum of use cases. Now, this is actually beneficial because in the cloud native space, you really need to have uh, of course, a platform that can support all these things, but also the, the application vendors uh, would also need to have a platform that, that has these capabilities, right? And it's the journey on the 5G and the edge side, it started with Rakuten. Of course, Rakuten had a lot of partners that it was working with. And because our platform was being hardened over the last few years to support these complex workloads, it became um, relatively easy for us to go and onboard I know the RAN vendors, the core vendors, the mobile edge application vendors, the OSS vendors, and so on. Uh, so the you know the, the the innovations that we have been putting into the platform has started, had started to pay dividends at, at Rakuten. Now now what's happened is that because of the broad spectrum of workloads that we could onboard, and of course fine tune the platform while we are onboarding this at Rakuten, it has led to other partners also to collaborate with us. Uh, we have of course partners across the spectrum from you know, the, the hardware vendors to the chip manufacturers, to the FPGA vendors, to 
the RAN vendors, to the packet core vendors, to the OSS, BSS vendors, to the edge application vendors, and all of those folks who have essentially now certified on the, on the Robin platform. And now this essentially helps everyone, right? It helps the operators because they can now very quickly go and onboard whatever service that they want to onboard uh, very quickly, right? Because the integration effort is, is, is less. It also helps the, uh, the partners because now they have a robust cloud native platform that has been tested at scale in production network. Um, and uh, for them, it's very easy to go into an operator and then roll out their services. Uh, so I think it's a win-win across the board. And it's, it's, it's been a very, very, we've been very fortunate um, that we have been able to validate this at Rakuten Mobile. Um, but we are really fortunate also that we have had now the ability to bring in so many different partners um, to run on top of the open cloud native uh, platform. Okay, so lots of exciting developments at the moment. What can we expect to see from Robin in, say, the next six to 12 months? So we have always been innovating. Um, right now, we are years ahead of where the competition is when it comes to cloud native platforms. Uh, we are the uh, first and, as far as we know, the only uh, 5G, uh, only cloud native platform that has a live production grade 5G uh, deployment on it. Um, and Rakuten has been a pioneer. It has been pushing us a lot in terms of ensuring that we are actually compliant in the cloud native way. It's not like we are compromising. Right? It is, um, I mean, Rakuten has been very religious in, in that matter, that they wanted this to be a pure play cloud native uh, implementation. Uh, so again, the first and only uh, platform that has been able to support this in production. Uh, and this has, of course, given us a big uh, lead over any other platform out there. Uh, but again, we continue to innovate. Uh, we are working very actively on things like you know, network slicing. And uh, I already talked about the innovations that you have done, the automation area. We are extending that to a much, much more complicated, more AI-driven uh, automation uh, so that you and the policies can, can be essentially automatically uh, you know, uh, discovered, learned, and then applied. Uh, we are working on things like how, how can we further decrease the OPEX and CAPEX for an operator so that you know it becomes more economically viable to go and run these uh, massive scale 5G networks um, in production. So a lot of innovations that are that we are working on, a lot of interesting things that you can expect to see from uh, the Robin team in the next uh, few quarters. Okay, so that sounds like a very exciting 2021 ahead for Robin. Partha, thanks very much for sharing the company story with us today. Thanks very much. Thanks, Ray. It has been a pleasure talking to you today.